was David. You are David? Come, 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 come. Your name is David. The Lord is saying you are going to have a son. His name shall be called David. Take it. My God. Shabaha Yekotos Kobaha. During one of the nights of the Resurrection Weekend service, uh, prayer partners were coming up to the different guests and giving them prayer request slips and asking them to write down what they wanted prayer for. And what I wrote down was that I wanted uh, fibroids to be removed uh, from my body miraculously, to be healed from fibroids. Um, I didn't necessarily put down to have children because I, I was told by the doctors that that's why I was having difficulty having children. Pastor Rich uh, called out and said, uh, who is called David? So, so I went forward and he said, uh, he laid his hands on me and said, uh, the Lord is going to give you a son and he shall be called David. I received I receive this so strong that I fell under the power of God. So in August, in August of 2021, my wife conceived again. And as we speak today, we have our baby boy, according to the words of the prophet, Pastor Rich, because the Bible says that who said and it come to pass when the Lord hasn't commanded it. Hallelujah. All right, let's look into the word of God tonight. Genesis chapter number 30. And Jacob took him the rods of green poplar and of the hazel and chestnut tree and peeled the white streaks in them and made the white appear which was in the rod. And he set the rod which he had peeled before the flock in the gutter, in the watering trough. When the flocks came to drink, that they should conceive when they came to drink. And the flocks conceived before the rod and brought forth cattle, ring strict speckled and spotted the influence of the word of God in your human spirit the influence say the influence of the word of God in my spirit come on say the influence hold your Bible to your heart say the influence of the word of God in my spirit God bless you you may be seated God has given us something that he has not given the angels. When you read in 1 Peter, in chapter number 1 and verse 10, it says, of which salvation the prophet inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace of God that should come to you. Look at verse 11. Searching in what manner of time the spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when he testified beforehand of the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Please underscore verse 12 very well. In verse 12 the Bible says and to whom was it revealed? That not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things that are now reported to you by them have, that have preached the gospel to you, uh, which the Holy Ghost sent from heaven. Read that last line. Which things, the what? The angels desire to look into. Oh my God. Let me tell you something. The angels don't desire to look into your bank account. There is only one thing that catches the attention of the angels. <laughs> Ooh, it said these things the angels, they desire to look into. Because the secrets of the kingdom have not been given to the angels. It says unto you, O son of man. When you read in Psalm 8, it says, When I consider the heaven, the works of thy hand, the mountains, the ocean, it says, What is man that you visit him? What is man, the son of man, that you visit him? How did God visit us? Through his word. The word of God to us is God's visitation to us. 
Have you wondered, ladies and gentlemen, why the angels of God encamp around them that fear God? The Bible says the angels of God encamp. They build a camp around them that fear God. Why do the angels build camp around folk who fear God? Because the mysteries of God, the secrets of God belongs to them that fear him. There are things, ladies and gentlemen, that if the angels in heaven must learn, they must look into your life. You are not following me. There are mysteries of the kingdom that if the angels are going to ever get a hold of it, they must look into the church. Because the Lord now, he is using his church as a display theater to reveal his wisdom. Did you ever read in Ephesians 3? And ten, everybody read one to go. He says, ah, let's start from verse number eight. Verse number eight. Now read one to go. He says, unto me, tell somebody unto me. Who am least of the least of the saints is this grace given that I should preach unto the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Look at verse number nine. He says, to make all men see what is the fellowship of this mystery, oh my God, which from the beginning of the world was hid in God. Ha, who created all things. Now in verse number 10, he says, he said to the intent that now, tell somebody now, what was hid in previous generation now unto the principalities and powers in the heavenly places might be known by the church the many sided wisdom of God so God is saying I want to use my church to reveal my many sided wisdom to the principalities and powers in heavens Oh, can I explain this to you? When you hear principalities and powers, sir, please don't think about demons here. He ain't talking about demons here. When he talk about, he says to the intent that the principalities and powers in the heavenly places might be made known by the church, the manifold wisdom of God. He is saying there are things, my wisdom, that will be revealed in the church to the intent that the principalities, the host of angels, will learn the wisdom of God looking into the church. Are we together now? There are some things that have not been revealed in previous generations. No wonder Peter said you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. There are, there are wisdom that God has kept like a time capsule. You know a time capsule? Oh yes. Like a time capsule. He had hidden some things in ages past. Things Elijah didn't know. Things that Moses didn't know. Things that Isaiah. The Bible says when Isaiah prophesied, he himself didn't know what he was saying when he said unto us a son is given unto us a child is born he didn't know what he was saying the government shall be upon his shoulder he didn't know what he was saying but he was prophesying being led of the holy ghost because the mystery of that revelation was not for their dispensation oh my goodness all that they were saying was wrapped up for such a time as this we whom the end of the world have come upon the mystery of these things have been given to us who are the end time church so now imagine the angels looking at you watching from home imagine how the angels look at you there is nothing as valuable on this earth like this book Look, can, I, can I show you something? Have you ever? Go to Exodus. This is not my. Go to Exodus. Exodus chapter number hmm, 25. Exodus chapter number 35. Hey, my goodness, my God. Cobra Tiscopa. Look at verse number 17. Exodus 25. Look at verse number 17. I am trying to show you what make the angels excited. <laughs> Exodus 25 and verse number 17. Exodus 25 and verse number 17. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Look at this. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Oh, blessed be your name. Can we read together? One to go. Now, this was the Ark of the Covenant. Tell somebody the Ark of the Covenant. Yes. So when the Lord told Moses to make the ark, so please, 
Imagine for a moment exhibit A. Tell somebody exhibit A. So let this be the Ark of the Covenant. So now, the Lord tells Moses, he said, I wanted to make an ark. So if you start from Exodus chapter number 25, mm, let's look at verse, verse number 10. Verse number 10. Okay. It says in verse number 10, it said, thou shall make an ark of shitting wood. Are we together? So now this is the ark. Now if you run to verse number 17, go to 17, it says now on top of the ark, thou shall place the mercy seat of pure gold. Are we together? So now it says on top of the ark, I wanted to place the mercy seat of pure gold and it gave them the dimension. Run to verse number 18. Everybody read. It says, and thou shalt make two cherubims. Tell us about two cherubims of gold beaten work shall thou make them. It says in, in the two end of the mercy seat. Please, I need help us. Both of you, gentlemen, can you come? So look at this now. It says, thou shalt make two cherubim. So this is my first cherubim. This is my second cherubim. Are we together, church? Now, look now in verse number 19. It says, Thou shalt make one cherubim on one end and the other cherubim on the other end. Even uh, of the mercy seat shall you make the cherubim on two ends thereof. Look at verse 20. Everybody read. It says, And the cherubim shall stretch forth their wing on high, covering the mercy seat. Gentlemen, stretch forth your wings on high. Okay, are we together so far? And they shall look one another towards the mercy seat. Now look towards the mercy seat. Now watch this. Watch this now. It says, they will stretch their wings. This is the Ark of the Covenant. It says, they will look towards one another, peering down towards the mercy seat. But did you notice now, inside the Ark of the Covenant, what is inside? Watch. When Moses went for 40 days and the Lord gave him the Ten Commandments, the Lord told him to put the ark, the, to build the ark as an encasement for the tablets. So now, the tablets that contains the word of God is in the ark of the covenant and now it is sealed, it is covered by the mercy seat. Now, look at the posture of the angels. They are trying to look and peer through to see what has been written there, but it is covered from them. Are we together, church? Please understand, this is a prophetic and the posture of what the Bible means when it says these things the angels desire to look into. Their desire is to look into that which, but when you look at it, they cannot see it now because the tablet of stones is hidden inside the Ark of the Covenant and is covered with the mercy seat. So now you cannot see it because it's covered from them. Oh my goodness. Did you see that? Look at verse 21. 21. 21. Here's what I was looking for. 21. Look at this. He says, And thou shalt put the mercy seat above the ark, and in the ark thou shalt put what? The testimony. What is it? What is it? What, what testimony? The word of God. Thou shalt put the testimony I shall give you. Put it in into the ark and cover it with the mercy seat. So now he paints to you the picture of the angels that are trying to see what is written there but is sealed. It is sealed. Why? It is not for them. To whom did he give the, the, the testimony? To you. So now if the angels are ever going to see what is written in the pages of this thing, they have to look into your life. Can I shock you? What dispensation was this? The dispensation of Moses ever before the prophets. We are talking some. So now, that's what the Bible says when you start in Ephesians chapter number 6, chapter number 3, in verse number, verse number 9. He said, that which was hidden. That which was hidden. It was hidden, my goodness. He says, Ephesians chapter 3, 3 and 9. Come on now. Ephesians 3 and 9. To make all men see. Tell us to make all men see. 
the fellowship of this mystery which from the beginning of the world was hid where? In God. It was hid in God. No man, no angels was able to see it. But he has revealed it for such a time as this. He has kept this mystery for such a time as this. What partition, what, what fellowship do you have with this mystery? How much of this mystery is flowing in your veins? How much of this mystery can you quote? How much of this mystery do you know? Hmm. Please understand the way God works. What he is doing now. He is painting to you the posture of the angels. So you can see. Because when you understand how the how, you know, read, you remember when the Lord was going to speak to Jeremiah. He said, Jeremiah, what do you see? He said, I see a kettle boiling. He said to Moses, he said, build according to pattern. So now when he shows us his picture, he's trying to create an imagery to us. So when you see the posture of the angels, you look at them, their hands are exalted. Their faces is peering down. But when you look at what they are looking at, it's covered. The essence, the most important item is the testimony. It is sealed from them. But it has been given to you. These things the angels desire. These things the angels desire to look into. Do you have it? Do you have it? Do you have these things that angels desire to look into? The Bible began to tell us in the story that we read about a man named Jacob. Say Jacob. He had served Lebanon for 20 years. So now, he's about to ask for his freedom. So he approaches Lebanon. He says, Lebanon. He says, you know you were broke. You had nothing until I came to you. And Lebanon said, very true. He said, but you have increased tremendously since I came. Very true. He said, now it's time for me to go. Levin said, no, sir. Ask me your wages because I need you to work for me. Because I have learned by experience the Lord has blessed me because of you. So which means if you leave, my company goes down. May that happen to you. Amen. That men begin to identify. They will recognize there is something about you. That you are a blessing to their, you are an asset to them. Now the Bible says, Laban says to Jacob, what shall be your wage? Please watch this now. And Jacob says, don't pay me anything. <laughs> so how then shall I pay you? He said nothing. He said just all I need from today. Take away, separate from the sheep, the sheep that are speckled, that are spotted, that are ring streaked. In other words, any sheep that has more than one color from today shall be my own. The sheep that has solid colors shall be your own. So, and, 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 and so Levin says, well, how do we do it? He says, from today, separate all the sheep currently that is more than one color. So if the sheep has black, has brown, has white, it belongs to you. Separate them. He says, now what I want you to have remaining is solid colored sheep. So, after today, once you are done separating, whatever becomes spotted in their offspring shall become mine. The solid color becomes yours. The ring streak spotted and streak shall become mine. <laughs> Levin said, this man has gone confused. The Bible says that very day, he took all the animals that had multiple colors separated them. He gave them three days apart so that God forbid there is no crossbreeding. You know, so one now went to the bathroom and now saw one in the corner. No, <laughs> he refused. He put a distance of three days between his animals and the animals he left with, 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 with Jacob. Now, watch this the book of Genesis is very poetic. The book of Genesis is allegoric in, in communication. The book of Genesis is not, it's a very deep book. 
The book of Genesis is more than what you see. It's more than the eyes could see. Because the Lord begins to tell us story within stories. The book of Genesis, the Lord begins to paint to us many mysteries in the kingdom. One of those mysteries is the life of the man named Abraham. The sons of Abraham, Ishmael and, and, and Isaac were not just two sons as it were. Had it not been for, for, for Saul in the Pauline revelation that made us know that those two sons represent covenants. So what you find in the book of Genesis many times are very deep and profound. Because now what Jacob is about to use now to reproduce animals is about to become a mystery that you and I must adopt in our scripture reading. Are we together? The Bible says, as soon as the man does the separation, he's thinking now Jacob is done for. Because they signed the agreement that the only way any animal that is ring street that has more than one color that is Jacob's wages. So the man quickly signs the daughter and he says, If you read, he says, Oh, I wish this thing you said now would be according to your word. Did you see it? Let me show you. <laughs> Look at the Genesis 37, Genesis chapter number 30. Look at it, <laughs> chapter 30. Oh, thank you, Lord. Look at this. Look at this, look at this, look at this. In verse number... Woo -hoo, who took it? Who took it? 34. Is it 34? Yes, yes, 34. Look at 34. 30, 34. It says, And Laban said, Behold, I would it might be according to your word. Look, can I see the NLT? I think the NLT will do a better job. NLT. Can you have it? Look at this. And Laban said, All right. Oh, no, it, it doesn't do it. But he's saying, what he just said now is too good of a deal. I would to God you will keep this deal. Because now he thinks he's about to struck like, he's about to win. Unknown to him that what is about to happen now is not biology. Oh my goodness. Leban is working, he's thinking this man is operating by biology. Nothing here is biology. Everything here is spiritual. Because the Bible says, at the end, Jacob began to reveal his secret. What he's about to do now was something that was revealed to him by revelation. <laughs> the Bible says, as soon as they separated, Jacob went into the bush, plucked three plants, a poplar tree, an hazel tree, and a chestnut tree. So please imagine for a moment, the Bible says, and, 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 and he, he, he took he took the rods. Imagine this to be the rod. So the stem, the branch of a poplar tree, the branch of an almond tree, the branch of a chestnut tree. The Bible says he peeled. He peeled the back. He made carvings. He made markings randomly without any, you know, particular design. Just randomly. You know how you peel the back of a plant? You know what I'm talking about? Oh yes, so he peeled the back of the plant, you know. And, and so by peeling that, the plant had, you know, some spots that were white, some spots that were covered. And the Bible says he laid those rods into the water trough. What a mystery, what a mystery, what a mystery, what a mystery. He laid those rods into the water flock, the same place that the flocks are going to come to drink. Are you hearing me now? The Bible says he hid these things in the water flock so that when the flock, when they come to drink, as they are drinking, now as they are drinking, their eyes begin to behold something startling, something that is, what is this? And as they beheld, as they imagined, as they thought about what they were drinking, what was inside the water, something began to happen. The male goat came from behind them and began to mix with them. And the Bible says when they conceived, they conceived what they saw. My God, my God, my God. If you don't know what God is trying to show you now, I don't know how to help you. This is the same water that all the animals are coming to drink. Tell somebody the water trough. Come and say the water trough. So now they came to the waters to drink. As they are drinking, all of a sudden, they begin to see rods that are strict, that are marked. 
They are seeing a rod that is not solid in color. They saw a rod that had streak, stripes, spotted. They saw these things. And as they drank, they are drinking. And they are looking at these things. And they are imagining what they are reading. They are imagining what they are drinking. As they were looking at it, the male goat comes and begin to mate with them at that time. And the Bible says, what they saw in the water entered their womb. Ha! 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 My God! Listen to me. There are things that God has put in this water trough. If only you will come thirsty and look into this water trough, there are mysteries of wealth. There are mysteries of long life. There are mysteries. Am I talking to someone now? That as you see them, as you see them, the Bible says we all with an unveiled face beholding the word of God as in a mirror, we are transformed into the same image. The people, the, 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 the animals, they began to conceive just like they imagined what was in front of them entered their spirit because they imagined it. They saw it and it was, ah, my God, my God. God is putting something into your spirit. Something is entering into your spirit that will cause you to be the head. That will make you to be the head. There are revelations. When you get a hold of that revelation, your life will never be the same. The last time they oppressed you, it will be the last time they oppress you because you found in the word greater is he that is in me than the devil that is in are you am i talking to someone hmm. have you found it have you found it have you found it when was the last time you looked in the pages you looked in the water trough and you found images that startled you that that that, that you had to ponder over that for the next two days you are saying lord what did that mean lord what 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 does this mean and you are pondering it it is flowing through you you are trying you are it has been on your spirit for the past two weeks you have been meditating on psalm 23 surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all these words you go in the bathroom it is flowing in your spirit surely goodness shall f am i talking to someone now there are things 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 ah, this is not biology this is pure spirit these are the mysteries and the bible says the bible says the bible says a brown animal a white sheep a white goat a black goat a brown goat that had no color there is no color in it at all that was speckled or spotted listen i did biology in school are you hearing me now back in those days they would tell us you know how to you know cross it and then they would give you the probability x and y you know when you cross a black sheep with a white sheep you are going to get a white and a black you will get a white and a black you will get a black and a black you will get a white and a white but never are you going to see spotted and speckled how did spotted and speckled come how did this thing come sir it was not on the outside it was not on their skin they got it because it was in the water trough look at this 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 the water trough test on the water trough the animals have to come and drink Psalm 23. He leaded me. <laughs> he leaded me. He leaded me. Besides where? Still waters. Like a, like, like a shepherd. He has led me. 
to green pastures. Now he leads me. What I have finished eating on green pastures. Now he leads me besides still waters. What I did on green pastures is not what I'm doing by the still waters. Because what I'm doing by the still waters is for me to look into the still water. When I look in the still water, I begin to see a reflection. Hey, my God, my God. When you look in the still water, sir, there is a reflection. No wonder the Bible says the face answered to face. Am I talking to someone now? Sir, did you ever read in the book of James, in chapter number one, in verse number 22, in James chapter number one, my goodness, this is Bible study, but something is pushing me. It is Bible study. It said, be ye not do, it said, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. In verse 23, the Bible says, if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like unto a man that beholds his natural face as in a glass. If any man heareth the word and does not do it, he likens that man as a man that beholds his face in a mirror. What happens to him? In verse number 24, the Bible says he beholded himself and goes away and straightway forget it what manner of man he was oh my god oh my god ah oh my goodness what manner of man are you what manner of man are you sir no one knows no one knows if you want to know your capacity if you want to know your ability if you want to know what manner of man are you sir look 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 he said if a man looks into the world and goes away he forgets who he was now he's confused am i above am i beneath can i still fall look at this in verse 25 the bible says but who so look into the perfect law of liberty and continue he's not like them who come and go but there is a continuous they stay they stay like the angels ever looking ever looking peering their eyes ever looking consistently the bible said be not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the mark that man tell somebody mark that man who so look into the perfect law of liberty and continues in that act being not a forgetful hearer he said mark that man that man might be broke today but come back tomorrow he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water he said his leaves will not wither whatsoever he does Hey! Ha! Ha! My God, are this thing so? Are this thing so? I wish I had a mirror here. Please look at this for a moment. Look at this. Go to verse 23. The Bible says, A man be not hearers of the word, but doers only. For he that hears the word and does not do the word is like a man that beholds his face in the mirror. So he looks at himself in the mirror. Sir, before I explain this further, when you look at yourself, I see that I'm well talked. I got my tie on right. Everything is the way it should be. But because I failed, to keep my eyes looking consistently, I turn away and I'm headed out. The moment I leave, the picture of what I saw, because he left me, now I am thinking, was I wearing a white shirt? Was I talked at all? Was my color white? Was my tie blue? Now I'm confused. I am not 
remembering what that image showed me. So now, I am now, the Bible says, he forget it. Tell somebody he forget it. What manner of man he was. So now, he is not consistent with the image he saw when he first looked at the mirror. So now, he is not able to prosper because let that man think he can receive anything because now he is vacillating. He is moving. Are you hearing me now? You must see the word of God brings faith in your spirit so you don't vacillate in the midst of situation because if you stay consistent with what God showed you, God said you are healed, but there is still a sickness somewhere. Do not vacillate. The doctor say it is on the right side, but the word of God says, whose report do you believe? Keep your eyes on the mirror. What God showed you, do not turn to the left. Do not turn to the right. Stay consistent. You prayed that God should give you that job. Until now, you have not gotten it. Don't change your conversation. Don't change your statement. Don't say life is hard. Don't say inflation. Don't say there are no jobs. Stay with what God showed you at 2 a.m. Whilst you were praying. When he promised you. When he assured you. That surely in blessing. I will bless you. In prosperity. I will prosper you. Stay with what he showed you. In the valley. Stay with what he showed you. In the closet. Are you hearing me now? Let no man, let no woman make you vacillate, make you change. Stay with what you saw in the mirror. Look at this. Look at this. He beholds himself. Ah! Hey! He beholds. He beholds. When was the last time you beheld yourself? When was the last time you beheld yourself? Not through the lenses of CNN. When was the last time you beheld yourself? Not through the lenses of your credit. When was the last time you beheld yourself? Not to your resume. Not through the words of and the opinions of men. When was the last time you beheld yourself through the pages of what God said about you? Who do men say that I am? Child of God, listen to me. What God has said about you supersedes the opinions of men. What God has written about you it supersedes the color of your skin. I'm trying to teach, but I feel something pushing me so strong. Now look at this. Watch, watch, watch. He beholds what manner of man he was. But because he goeth away, tell us when don't go away. Don't go away. Don't go away. Because the moment you take your eyes off, like Peter, you begin to sink. Don't take your eyes off. Tell us when don't take your eyes off. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher. Are we together, church? The Bible said the moment you take your eyes away, you forget what manner of man you are. So the Bible says, what is the remedy? Verse 25. The Bible said, but who so? Hmm. <laughs> Look at into the perfect law of liberty and the operative word there is continue. Tell somebody continue. He continues therein. Don't forget the image you see. Keep that image. Keep it in you until you conceive. Are you hearing me now? Keep the image you saw in the water trough until that which is on the outside become implanted on the inside. Are you hearing me now? He said, he said, continue therein. He said, mark that man. He said, this man, tell somebody this man. This man, this man. <laughs> this man, this man. This man, he may come from a house 
where nobody ever rises. It may come from a background where altars and foundation has ravished. But this man, because he keeps his eyes on God, he said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners. But his delight is in the law of his word. And in his word, he meditates. They are not mark that man. He may be broke today, but come back tomorrow. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. His leaf shall not wither. Whatsoever he does. So now, he has given us a tool for operation. Kalamanda. He has given us a tool. So we are businessmen, but I have a tool. Are you hearing me now? There is a tool that Jacob was operating with. Sir, if any other person goes ahead and tries to cut, cut leaves and cut stones and cut wood and put in that water trough, it's not going to work for them. Are you hearing me now? Are you hearing me now? Because Jacob was a custodian. To him was giving the mystery. Are you listening to me, church? The question is this. What image does he show us? When we look in the water trough. Sir, look at me. The animals that came to the water trough, they were pure white. Pure black. Pure brown. But the image that they saw was ring straight, was spotted, was speckled. <laughs> so now, the transformation, according to 1 Corinthians 3 and 18, the Bible says, <laughs> it says, let 1 Corinthians, look at 2 Corinthians 3, Ele Baba, 2 Corinthians 3, and start from verse 16 for me. 2 Corinthians, oh my goodness, fly with me, media. Ele Baba, 1 Corinthians 3, start from 16, start from 16. Start from 16, 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. Oh yes, yes, stay here. He said, nevertheless, when they, that, when they shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Look at verse number 17. The Bible says in verse 17, he said, where the spirit of the Lord is, there's what? Now look at verse number 18. The Bible says, we all with an open face beholding in a glass the the what? The what? I don't understand. I don't understand. We all with open face beholding in a mirror the what? Anybody got a mirror here? Anybody got a mirror here? When you look at your mirror, what do you see? When you look at your phone and you check your mirror, what does it show you? What does it show you? It shows you your natural face, doesn't it? <laughs> it doesn't show you anything else. Imagine you check your phone today and you are checking the mirror and you saw Pastor Rich. Huh? You said, what's, what's going on here? Imagine you whipped out your makeup mirror and you are trying to adjust your foundation. And you check it. It is not showing you. It's showing some other person. <laughs> You're like, what's happening here? Sir, the word of God tells us when we look in a glass, the glass represents a mirror. He says we are seeing what? The glory of God. My God. He says, we are changed into the same image. Ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you, exhibit B, the mirror. When you look in this mirror, it does not show you who that you are seeing in your earthly mirror. It shows you another image, which is the glory of God. And it's telling you, that is your natural image, child of God. 
if you want to know who you are, you want to know your complexion, you want to know how tall you are, you want to know your stature, sir, look in this mirror. When you look in this mirror, it does not show you your earthly physique. It shows you the glory of God. What you are seeing in that mirror is called what? It's called what? The glory of God. So if the mirror is showing the glory of God, what am I? 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 I? Tell somebody I am the glory of God. Come on, say I'm the glory of God. Come on, say I'm the glory of God. And listen to me, child of God. You are going to move from one dimension of glory to another dimension of glory. From glory to glory to glory to glory. Come on, somebody shout glory. When was the last time you saw the glory of God? How can you be depressed knowing that you are the glory of God? Can the glory of God be depressed? This is your excitement 247. And folk don't understand. They say, how can you be so excited and and you're making $15 an hour? How? Because I'm the glory of God. How can you be so excited that you are broke? Because I'm the glory of God. I'm the glory of God. My goodness, this is our cogitation. It's our understanding. Are you listening to me, church? Let this be your understanding. Please don't be a forgetful hearer. Don't live here now. And then you go home, somebody talks on you. And you you put your shoulder down. No, sir. No, sir. You are the glory of God. If they knew who you are, they will not say what they said. They obviously are myopic. Are you listening to me now? Your bosses may not like you at work because they don't know who you are. If they knew who you were. That's why you should hold your Bible boldly on the, at the airport. Hold it nicely. Walk to the airport. You will look strange. Hold it boldly. You should have a Bible. This is the glory of God. This is your image. It's your reflection. It won't show you nothing wrong. Sir, The mirror, your natural mirror shows exactly what you look like. There is a spot on your face, it will show you. The word of God does the same thing. It shows me exactly who I am. I am not braggadocious. No devil can whoop me. Because he says, greater is he that is in me. Are you hearing me now? I am not bragging when I tell you. I cannot be afraid of 10,000 demons that set themselves against me. Because the Lord is my light. And my salvation. Are you hearing me church? This is our understanding. So how can you be so far away from this book? The influence of the word of God in your spirit. Is to make a transformation. The way a butterfly evolves out from that, from that little thing. How it comes out from the caterpillar. The eva evolves, it, it metamorphoses. Ladies and gentlemen, can I submit to you? The Bible says, we all with an open face, beholding the glory of God, we have been what? Tell somebody, change. The word change is the Greek word metamorpho. Where you get the word metamorphosis. The Greek word is the word metamorpho. Where you get the word metamorphosis. There is a transformation. That is a change when you subject your spirit to the word of God. That is why I tell you, if you want to see change in your life, read this Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Oh, you will never recover. You will never recover. When the law began to change my life, I can remember it was the first, my, my first time I read this book. First time. It, there is, the word of God, listen to me, is a person. Tell somebody a person. 
You know that thing? What would Jesus do? You know, back in the day, I don't know if you, they don't, it's, it, it's, it kind of faded away now, you know? There was actually like a wristband back in the day, you know? W, 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 whatever, you know? What would you just do? So the premise was, if you are tempted now, before you do that thing, you say, what would Jesus do? So he will not sin, so you don't sin. When was the last time? <laughs> you stood before temptation. And then <laughs> what would Jesus do came to your mind? No, sir. The word of God is a person. Sir, it animates you. Are you hearing me now? It, it does what? It animates you. The bar, David said, order my steps. It orders your steps. Are you hearing me now? When the word of God is in you, he said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. You can't walk in darkness. No, sir. With the word of God in you, you can never be at the wrong place at the wrong time. Come on now. It's not possible. Impossible. No, sir. You are guided by the word. The Bible says, are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walks in the day, he will not stumble because what? He has the light of God. Where? In himself. John chapter number 11. He said, are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walk in the light, he will not stumble. Why? Because he has light in him. He said, but if any man walks in the night, he stumbles. Why? Because there is darkness in him. The reason why men make... Oh. Sir, get this word in your spirit. This word will influence your decisions. Are you hearing me now? Not because you are consciously thinking, should I go left? Should I go right? No, sir. No, sir. It animates you. Life is too fast. Sometimes for you to sit down, hmm, Lord, left or right? No. Be life is moving at in a flash. Are you hearing me, church? Your life, God, this word is a programming. Do you understand programming? It's a programming. It programs your life for success. It programs you for a good life. It programs your steps. The, 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 the flowing, the goings, and it, it, it programs you. Um, there's two questions online. Pastor Rich, one of them says, based on what it says in Galatians 2.20, Christ is not upset with me, right? Even though I may sin, it makes no. It's not upset with you. Okay, and then the second question is: But if is... you continue, <laughs> don't continue. You know, don't. You know, grow up. Walk out of that stuff. Why? Why? Why keep sinning? What is it doing for you? Is it helping you? Why? Why keep sinning? We we overrate this stuff called sin. It's overrated. Uh, Pastor, I just, I just cannot, I just can't control myself. I just can't control myself. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You just don't, you just don't want to. All you need, let me tell you, secret, secret to work out of sin. Are you ready? Are you ready? One word, consequence. What did I say? If you're watching online, write consequence. If you understand consequence, you will never sin again, no matter how fine she is. <laughs> no matter how fine he is, like, <laughs> eh, no, 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 I'll pass. If you understand consequence, you know, you come from this great generation talking about, oh, he just love you, he just love you. You know, you can smoke like a chimney, drink like a fish, he just love you. You know, you're not perfect. God loves you. You're not perfect. God knows. He understands. We have not a high priest that cannot be touched by the feeling of our infection. He understands. He understands. Why? Why he understands? Satan is taking all your marbles. <laughs> Satan is collecting all. If that is what Joseph understood, if this was Joseph's revelation, this he understands, right? He is not mad, right? If that was his revelation, he never would have made it out of prison. Listen, if I I don't know how to say this now, I will say it once and I'll leave it. Let God let God handle it. God forgave Adam, but he kicked him out from the garden. When you understand consequence, you just, you just find yourself living above sin. sin. You'll be past it. I'm telling you. And what was, what, remember 
I told you from the beginning? Practice what? It makes perfect. Anything you practice, you become good at. If you practice how to walk out of sin, you will become a, a temptation worker. You become so easy. But if you let yourself keep falling at every, 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 if half a temptation just comes now, you just fall. <laughs> practice. Amen. How do you, how, how do you practice? You can't, this thing is not emotional. Listen, this book, tell us what in this book, we either keep you from sin or sin we keep you from this book. When this book is in you, how can a young man keep himself from sin by taking heed to this book? This book is for your help. All right. So please don't let Satan skew what I've told you now to bring you under condemnation. Romans 8 and 1. There is therefore now no condemnation. Are we together? Are we together? But I'm trying to incite you to grow up. You are losing stuff. You are losing stuff. Grow up. All right? Amen. All right. Next verse. Next. All right. Yes, please, sir. I like when you mention that the scriptures or the word of God is likened unto a mirror. Um, does that mean that when we go into the word of God, it's supposed to reveal what is, what's in our life that aren't supposed to be there? And at the same time, reveal to us what's supposed to be in our lives, but are missing in our lives. Very strong point. Very strong point. And I like the, the, the direction. It's like, it's like osmosis. You know? Moving from a higher concentration through a permeable membrane to a lower concentration. Is that correct? When osmosis continues over a long time, both becomes what? Saturated. What is on the left becomes saturated. The same pH as the one on the right, on the one on the left and the right. So what am I saying? When I look at this word, there is a transformation that begins. The Bible says the part of the just, Proverbs 4 and 18, the part of the just is as a shining light that starts out in a dark place. But as I continue in my progression, it gets brighter and brighter and brighter. So when I first start with the word of God, there are some things that is in my life that is not consistent with the image that I see. It is my due diligence to stay with it. Be not a forgetful hearer, but a practitioner, a doer of that which I see. Are we, are we together now? If you read the scripture we read just now, the Bible says when you read in Genesis 30, is it around verse 30 or 29? It says, so shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come. There are some practice you do as a righteous man. It does not speak today. It speaks for you when? In time to come, practice righteousness. Church attendance is a righteous practice. Online church is unrighteousness. I'm telling you. You live close and you choose to watch online. It's not, it's not a righteous practice. It will speak for you in the future. So if you are watching from online, I will end it with you. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Stand to your feet. Hold your Bible to your heart. I love my Bible. Oh, just go ahead. Hold your Bible close to your heart and begin to tell him good things. Tell the Lord good things. Tell him good things. I thank you, Lord, for placing value on me. Thank you for giving me the earnest word of God. Thank you for you have made me a partaker. You have made me, you have given me grace to fellowship with this mystery. This mystery that was kept hidden for ages. This mystery that angels desire to look into. Father, thank you for making me, oh God, a partaker. Lord, I ask you, Lord, even at this time, I repent. Lord God, for my 
my, my, my relation with the word of God. Father, I will give attendance till you come to study. I will give attendance to Bible reading. I'm not praying for you. Pray for yourself. I will give attendance. Open your mouth. I will give attendance to Bible reading. I will give attendance to the study of scriptures. I will give attendance to the word of God. Father, and as I study, Lord God, let there be a transformation. Let my spirit be metamorphosed forced into the same image the image of your word blessed be the name of god blessed be the lamb of god blessed be your name in jesus glorious name we pray amen amen please if you are watching online touch the like button if you have not subscribed please subscribe everybody take up an offering Take up an offering in-house online. Hallelujah. I will explain online church again and again because it said repetition is the law of lasting impression. Listen to me. Online church is for those who live outside of state. Online church is for those who live overseas. Those who live, you know, outside. Not for those who live within Houston. Don't do that. Pay the price. Pay the price. Church attendance is a price. There is no other way. If you live outside of Houston, please listen to me. For those of you who live outside of Houston, don't make this online church your primary home church. No, sir. You need to belong to a, a local assembly where you are. You say, Pastor, oh, the church is near me. There is no fire. Carry fire there carry fire there. When Paul went to the island of Melita, there was no fire. He carried fire there. So you go there and speak in tongues. Who knows if God is sending you there to carry fire? So the fire you've carried from here, take it there. Belong to a local assembly. It is not man's idea. It is God's idea. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Please, very important announcement earlier in the beginning of the year. The Lord began to deal with me about the nine blessings of Jacob. Tell somebody nine blessings of Jacob. Please, uh, if you are watching online, maybe you have seen the, the thing, the thing scrolling. It's going to begin July the 1st to the 9th of July. This is the mid-year. We are in July begins the mid-year. So we are starting nine days fasting. Nine days what? Fasting. Nine blessings of Jacob. There are nine blessings that Jacob, that Isaac pronounced upon his son to transfer the Abrahamic blessing. Nine declarations. Nine declarations to transfer the Abrahamic blessing. So every day, we will take one of those blessings as our prayer point. I'm going to come here. I'm not going to preach. I will st we start from seven, from seven to eight. We will just write the prayer point on the board. The first prayer point was, may the Lord give you the dew of heaven. Prayer point on that day, they want Father, dew of heaven. One hour, share the grace, we go home. Next day, we continue fast. Day two, the next word is, give you the fatness of the earth. Lord, we are as it is, we are not going to change it, paraphrase it. Father, give me, the, if it was good for Isaac, it's good for me. If it was good for Jacob, nine declarations and the Abrahamic blessings was, the baton was handed over to a new generation. These things are powerful. Nine declarations. Nine powerful declarations. And the man was under the influence of the Holy Ghost when he made those statements. So we are going to take those statements each day, one statement. We will pray it as is. I will not give you two prayer points, just one. As you come in, we sit on the board. We are just praying one hour in one prayer. We start from seven, close at eight on the dot, not 801, eight on the dot. Start seven. In fact, there's no praise and worship. I'm coming up. You, you know me. We start at seven. I'm the one on the altar. No, no praise and worship. We are just starting prayer. We are done. Seven days, nine days prayer and fasting. We want to provoke blessings. Blessings. Let the remainder of the year be blessed. 
So please, get ready. Nine days, prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. Are you blessed? Please don't forget, uh, on Saturday we are, be, we are continuing God of Hannah. This is for those who are believing God for the fruit of the womb. God of Hannah. You must be married and you are believing God. Or you know someone who is believing God for the fruit of the womb. So please make sure you are here on Saturday at 12. It's from 12 to 1.30. Hallelujah. And uh, that's it. All right. Have you given your offerings? Father, we bless your name. We thank you. Our head is a good head. Our life is a good one. Grace on our side. Mercy on our side. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Please let me see the instrumentalist. The God that visited Sarah. The God that comforted Hannah with the child. Right now, the Lord is touching you. The Lord is giving someone. I'm hearing David. What's David? You are David? Come, 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 come. Shabbat Your name is David. The Lord is saying you're going to have a son. His name shall be called David. Take it. My God. Shabbat During one of the nights of resurrection weekend service, uh, prayer partners were coming up to the different guests and giving them prayer request slips and asking them to write down what they wanted prayer for. And what I wrote down was that I wanted uh, fibroids to be removed uh, from my body miraculously, to be healed from fibroids. Um, I didn't necessarily put down to have children because I, I was told by the doctors that that's why I was having difficulty having children. Pastor Rich uh, called out and said, uh, who is called David? So, so I went forward and he said, uh, he laid his hands on me and said, uh, the Lord is going to give you a son, and he shall be called David. I received, I received this so strong that I fell under the power of God. So in August, in August of 2021, my wife conceived again. And as we speak today, we have our baby boy, according to the words of the prophet, Pastor Rich. Because the Bible says that who said and it come to pass when the Lord hasn't commanded it.